Okay, so I'm going to leave on my trip today, but I wanted to talk a little. And I'm going to take my thing with me because I think I'll probably have some time by myself. And then I will record while I'm gone if um, that happens. Um, but anyways, what I wanted to talk about today, for one thing, oh, she just goes over there and lays down and just goes back to sleep. She harasses me, harasses me all fucking night, makes me get up, I get up, start doing stuff. She just goes to sleep. I was like, what is the point of this bitch? So, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I just figured, well, usually on a travel day, you know, your, your sleep's always jacked up. Like, so you have to be at the airport at five in the morning, you know, you have to be there two hours ahead. So, just going to go with the flow. I can handle it. Um, my eyes are probably friggin' tired as shit by the time I get there. I'm just, I, it's nice when you get out though on the open road because I don't have to look at little details. It's just big open space, which I'm sure is going to be shrouded with, um, you know, fumigation in the fucking sky. I can't believe now how many people are posting about it and how many people <clears throat> are posting about losing their hair. Like, all of the stuff that I have been talking about is all coming together. People are starting to really see, oh, my hair's falling out. I have no reason. Even though they tell me it's the Dobic, I, uh, you know, there's no reason for my hair to fall out like this. I saw um, a girl who was doing a video on it. And so she was asking other people, she said she's having chunks fall out. And so many people are having just chunks fall out. And so a bunch of people had duetted it. But this one girl who had duetted it, all this whole side, this whole side, all that completely had fallen out. She only had like a mohawk strip of hair left and she was bawling. Oh my God, it's heartbreaking. I mean, I know the med beds are gonna, gonna you know, grow hair back. Even this woman with the EES energy beds, she said it grows your hair back and makes it thicker. So once we start getting more into that, it's just the way they keep this environment is toxic. It's very toxic and artificial. And, um, you, but that is kind of what I want to talk about. So, um, there's this video, there's a guy who I follow on TikTok or whatever, you know, we're friends. So we follow each other and sometimes we comment back and forth. But a while back, he had, I had posted stuff about the fake son. And so him and I got in this discussion because he said it's not a fake son. And he's showing me footage of him out there like sun gazing. And he's like, the sun's perfectly fine. It's perfectly normal. I'm like, well, it might be normal where you are. It's not normal where I am. I freaking happen to have a relationship with the sun as well. Like, I think I can recognize if it's the sun or not. Like, what the hell? And so, um, you know, his, his thing is to keep pushing about that this is the normal sun and it's doing some weird thing, I guess. I'm not sure. And so I, um, when he, uh, he posted the other day, he had footage and he was showing this blue silver light up in the sky. He couldn't even look at it. He was turning. He was like, what the hell is this? So I commented, I said, that's the fake son I've been talking about. So he, he messages me back this morning and starts telling me, oh no, that's not, that's all propaganda. There is no fake son. The son is just going through the, starts explaining to me, whatever, whatever. I don't even know. <laughs> like, so I just said back to him, he goes, there's no evidence that there's a fake son. It's like, dude, there's all sorts of evidence. Like people have been sharing so much evidence. The Chinese put out that they made a fake sun. There's all this evidence now being put out that they're, they created a fake sun to use as an energy weapon. It's like, come on. People get so stuck on what they believe that they don't look at anything else. It's the same thing with all these groups. I think I've said it for so long. It's like people like start awakening to one thing and then they just get stuck. They just stay there like, okay, I got all the answers, people. It's right here. I figured it out. It's like, there's way more to it. It's way more complex. It's way more complicated. And 
So yeah, he wants to just sit and argue with me and tell me like the son is going through some sort of a a phase or whatever, which I have no doubt. We are we are energetically we are attached to the earth and the sun. So we're all, and that's one reason why they get us on medications and mess with clocks and time and stuff is to keep us out of our rhythm, keep us out of our natural rhythm because we thrive when we're in our natural rhythm. Our bodies do better, our souls, our minds, everything. You know, we're much better when we are in our natural rhythm, but they do everything to set it off. And that's why we have so many problems, obesity, depression, uh, hormone problems, like so many things going on with people, all related to toxins, this frequency attacks, and this, um, the other thing I said. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, um, yeah, he was sitting there, I put my rings on, every time I leave, I always forget my rings, and then when I go out someplace, it's always like, oh, I wish I had my rings. And so now I put them on, and now i got to get used to because I've got to scratch my nose every five fucking seconds because allergies. So ridiculous. God, I'm so sick of this shit. So anyways, um, you know, he, he's positive that there is, you know, everything's fine. It's just the sun is doing something because energetically things are changing which all of that is true but people are not seeing the whole thing or something like we are having these things used against us that is part of the awakening which gets us to wake up see the truth say no that is not going to work for me that energy is what creates the change the the change this this we are creating the energy of change the, the, the sun and stuff is not creating the change. It is a cosmic cycle. So this cosmic cycle occurs. It has to go every 26,000 years or whatever. So all of the energy coming in. So that's why we have all of these consciousness around us that are communicating with us. Because it's in this cycle of change. So you have communication. You have this cycle of change. You have us connected to the earth and the sun. And I think the moon is completely artificial. I think the sun, I think there's some things that are natural, but I mean, I don't know how much stuff, it, like so much stuff is, this is a projection. Like there is, there is no real stuff. Like people think like things are real. They're not fucking real. So he, um, so the, the cycles are a part of it, but we, our energy is, is part of the domino thing. Like it is not going to like those things, those things have been occurring. Those things are happening and you can see still how slowly people awaken. So it is the awakening that pushes that energy out. So us, as a collective, as a, as a huge amount awakened, that energy pushes out and that creates the change. The, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like these people are just, when they say stuff like that, maybe I'm taking it wrong, but I feel so much like it is, oh, we're just these little peon earthlings and, oh, the sun and the moon, they're going to do what they're going to do. We better, you know, let's all pray. Let's all uh, do rain dances. It's like, that is not how it works. It is not that everything we are, I don't know, God man. some of the stuff is like hard to explain because I start explaining it and it's like, does this even making sense to what I'm trying to explain? Because I am, I just see it as everything works together. There's nothing that has more power than anything else. Everything has, uh, it is, um, you know, a natural flow. Everything has a flow. And we're in this flow of change. We're in this dramatic period of time that's changing over to a new age. So a lot of stuff is going to occur. But the way I see it, 
is the powers that be don't want that. They don't want us to awaken. They don't want this change. They think somehow because they're God complex that they can control the earth and nature and all of this stuff. They can't control it. So they are like yesterday I was sitting outside and, and the, the halo thing, like the, the sun was out, it was blue as usual. And then it was, and cook your eyeballs, cook your, it just cooks you, but you don't get a suntan, do you? So I um, was outside and then it um, was out there and I saw like the halo, but it was really light. So I was sitting there watching and I was seeing, oh, it's already hazy. So they've already been spraying it. And I did see a plane go, but you saw all, I mean, you can hear them and hear them, but you see all of this, um, smoke start covering it and start going out and then you start seeing it like create clouds and stuff because i know it says each chemical touches the other chemical it creates an expansion in the atmosphere and so while i was sitting there watching it and there it, there seems to be this battle between the blue sky and this created atmosphere and before like months ago when i was going into bellingham all the time and I was getting that footage and I kept saying it's weird because it's like it's like an inverted sky, but it's also like this multi-layered sky. Like you look up and there's like another sky beyond the sky. I kept going, what the hell is going on? This is so weird. Well, yesterday, so I saw what they were doing. So we have the sky. So say we have the sun and I don't know if it is blocked by some planet atmospheric change or something like that. I'm not sure something's going on no doubt about it like i don't give a shit what these people try and say oh yeah that's natural that's just a circle rainbow oh that's just a sun dog oh that's just humidity that's totally normal if it's fucking totally normal then why the fuck is the government sitting there spending hours and hours and how much for gas for planes to just go and go they probably get their gas free but how much to just go and go and go oh which by the way speaking of the double standard bullshit I just saw how all of these different people, the celebs, the polys, all of these people who are way up there, you know, over us, telling us, go get this, go get this. They paid to be on the sheet that said they were, but they had sailing. So it's all bullshit. Everything is fucking bullshit here. Do as I do. And I was just thinking today, too. I saw, um, oh, it was Nancy Pelosi. Oh, God, she's such a... God, I don't even know what to think about that little squirrely girl. But, and so she was standing out there talking and I don't know, maybe this was edited, but I swear to God, some the reporter asked her if she was drunk and she's just sitting there just talking weird, which it is not the same. If you put her next to the old one, that is not the same person. But right here, so she's sitting here and her hair's parted around here or something right here, like this whole circle. It was just a big chunk out of her hair. So, I mean, maybe they can't get away from the radiation that they're putting on all of us. Or maybe that's just to get us to be like, weird, why does she have a big circle? You know what I mean? You just don't know all of this different stuff of how much is it to... Because my mom tells me all the time, like, this stuff that's just astounding. I'm always like, Mom, that is... It's absurd and over the top because it's trying to wake people up. It's just going to keep getting more and more absurd and more and more ridiculous, more and more irritating because it has got to be outlandish because people don't wake up. They just sit there and just, they just cut it off. Like they don't want to pay attention to what they don't want to deal with. So, and they've got other things to do. Get to work. It's part of the enslavement. So anyways, with the one sky, so you have the blue sky, which I think the sun is up there somewhere. And, um, but it could very well be blocked by this. I mean, so many people who follow this Narubu thing and Wormwood or something. And what I had heard, and, um, you know, I don't know, I have never really gotten into it and just gone all through it. I've heard little bits and pieces, but that um, it's a ship. In the as the Anunnaki coming and it and it has some big rotation, but there is no space. So that is the thing: is 
when you have to start, people talk about, you have to start putting it into, okay, but there's no space. Okay. So this is, um, so when I was out there looking and I saw the blue sky and the big puffy clouds, it's like they look normal, but you couldn't see the real sun. But so then they spray it and there's this blue sun and then it has this halo thing. They spray all that and then they make a second sky on top of the other sky that is this weird atmosphere that is fumigating and has a lot of humidity apparently because it never stops fucking raining. And so then the, um, so there is these two skies and then they put this fake one out. I think it is part of, I, I a hundred percent. When I saw the article thing talking about it being a weapon, I was like, yeah, because that's what I said from the very beginning. It's like they have a lens, like what people used to do with ants when I was a little kid. They get these magnifying glasses and then they'd shoot the sun through it and they would pop ants and they would think like, look at this, the like magic trick, you know, that's what they're doing to us, I think, because it is crazy how hot this thing gets. And you can't look at it and, you know, it has no purpose. The plants can't, uh, it's not helping the plants. It doesn't give you color. Like it's, I mean, what is the purpose of it? To trick us into thinking it's a sun? It's got to have a purpose. So I say it is a weapon. And, you know, they are the two, uh, one stone, two bird things. So it could very well also be to trick us to think. That everything's all kosher with the regular sun. Like we are not going to notice. Like this is a different sun. Some people don't notice. And some people think it's just the sun evolving. The sun's evolving. It's changing. It's turning white. It's because the atmosphere is heating up. It's like you motherfuckers. God damn. Uh, sometimes I think some of the most outlandish stuff makes sense to people. It's like that makes no sense to me. None at all. So, um, and then I saw this woman and she was talking, she was like this really spiritual person who obviously had a following and she was talking to him or something about, um, oh, somebody I think asked her how she stays calm or whatever during all this. And she's explaining, you know, like I, um, realize there's things out of my hands and they're doing all this stuff. What am I going to do? Just sit and focus on it and drive myself crazy. Like you can't do anything about it. Which, yeah, what can we do until more people, like if we were all united and we all, you know, we could freaking walk and all hand in hand and go to the same damn place. We could go arrest these motherfuckers, but you know, we're not all united. We're not all on the same page. I mean, there's people who think that all of this stuff that is occurring is completely natural. So she said that, that, um, you know, and besides this, uh, I know the earth cycles and we're due for a pole shift. And so I'm like, yeah, I know we're going to have a pole shift, but the earth is stationary. So how does the earth spin on its axis if it's stationary? The only way that it could spin on its axis is if we stuck with the globe model. But there, once you cross out of that and you go into the flat earth model and the firmament and stuff... There is no spinning on the axis. Was it going to spin like a record real quick? Like, it won't spin. So I think, again, that is metaphoric. That this spinning on the axis. I think that is the flipping right side up. Because everything is upside down right now. Dark is light. Light is dark. All of that stuff. That's what we find so frustrating as we wake up. Because everything is in an inversion in their weird reality. But, see... It is like, if you think about the energy through generation, through, through the age, and it moves in this direction, and how the pendulum works is it goes, this goes way over. And like right now, this is why I feel like they've got like a guitar string just stretched, stretched, stretched energetically. And when it goes, it's going to boom. It's going to pop back this energy. When the pendulum swings back and we go the other direction, it's going to be abrupt. It's going to go like boom. Because of this tension that the energy is pulled so tight this direction going the wrong way. And this cycle is when I think the poles flipping is the energy flipping the other direction. Where north and south go the other way. So 
things that didn't make sense are going to make sense. It's like the disclosure of everything. Everything starts coming together. You start seeing the truth. That's what I think is what people call the pole shift. Is it going to really be our planet spinning around? It is going to be the energy going the other direction and flipping on its axis and taking us the other way. And that, when we go the other way, you see, that's what we want. They keep pulling us and pulling us and pulling us this way. And it is, I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all. People are just getting sicker and sicker. The hair's falling. I mean, like we're getting so pulled in this negative, this negative energetic way. And so many people are just so focused on every single fucking bad thing. They can't let go of anything. They can't just get focused on themselves. They can't get focused on what they want for their future. All they can do is focus on fear, fear, fear. Still so many people talking about, I've seen more farmers now speaking out. I know a woman was showing her stuff that she just went and picked up that she said you used to, it used to be like 14 bucks. And she has to go get this stuff every two days and she says 60 bucks. And there's no way. She said, if you think that the farmers are going to be able to do this, just be expecting to pay like $70 for a chicken. So, um, but that's all part of, like, even when it started showing, um, everything that it shows, people don't, like, go with that and start changing. Like I had said, as soon as they start talking about food things, like, why weren't people starting to think differently about it? Like, I don't know. It just made sense to me to start thinking, okay, so if all of a sudden we don't have food like we did, do I really, like, we don't really need to eat that much. Like, look at everybody is obese. People are overweight. They're sluggish. They don't feel good about themselves. So, obviously, we're eating too much as a species. We're... We're, and it's part of the process. It's part of what they want to do. So the, they see it as a success. But for us and our health and our avatars, it is a negative. So when things started happening right away and they started talking about that, to me, it was like a reevaluation. Like, how do we feed ourselves? Like, I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and jump through hoops to get a goddamn loaf of bread. And, um, so how am I going to feed myself? Like, what am I going to do? How much food do I really need? Start looking at it like that. But people don't do that. And look at how it's got to keep getting worse and worse and worse and worse to where, you know, they're going to be paying $70 for a chicken. At what point are you going to start being like, you know, I mean, there'll be people who are like, oh, I guess I really don't need to eat meat. And that's going to shift towards that. Like all of these things are going to keep shifting and keep changing. And I mean, I'm sure there's some people I mean, I know I'm not just the only one who things happen and you start thinking like, oh, how do I pull free from this? What can I do to change this? How can I do that? Some people just stay, you know, holding on. It's like the, you know, you're out on the inner tube behind the boat and it starts going crazy, you know, and some of us just let go. And other ones just keep holding on, dragging, going under the water, under the water and just like. You know, they're going to hold on for dear life because they're so scared of what would happen if I don't have this system to rely on. What will happen if the grocery store stopped supplying me with food? What will happen if I don't have a piece of paper that says I'll get a good job? That piece of paper didn't give you a good job. Most people who have those pieces of paper are working jobs they could have had a GED. They didn't need to have a fucking college degree. So... <coughs> My throat's really scratchy. I'm just really getting myself all worked up. <clears throat> but I just feel like people just don't look at things logically or something. Like, I don't know. Maybe that woman doesn't know anything about the flat earth. And so to her, you know, the planet's about to shift. Because there is a cataclysm. There is a shift. There is something that is going to happen. If it's the water rising... Whatever it is, I don't know. I know that we won't be killed because we can't be killed. But you have to understand that about yourself. To not be killed, possibly. You know? I mean, if you, if you believe you can't be killed and you have that awareness, 
then you can continue as your avatar, right? But if you think like you can be killed, then you would just go out and you go wherever it is you think you go when you die. It is, um, it is uh, an understanding or recognition, I think, of self. And I think it is all happening in alignment with this. Because like I had said, I don't know, a long time ago, when I was talking about the light bodies and uh, this transition and, and the cataclysm and how we end up being, like, is it a different place? Like, is it moving? Like, I don't know all of the stuff, but I do think there's some sort of a cataclysm. If it's going to kill a bunch of people, I don't know. I had heard before it was going to be that the vibration thing, like this big energetic surge is going to come in. Like we, as we awaken in more and more outrage and we send this energy out, which the Schumann resonance is showing intense energy. So, and that one guy who was talking, uh, I can't think of his name. I'd seen him on David's show, but he's, he seems to be really popular. Like he's on a lot of shows, but he has something about reading energy and computers or something. But he also talked about this, um, the energy that we're putting out is creating the sun to do this energetic surge back on us. And, and I've heard this a bunch of times. I know I've talked about it. But so I see it as people are going to be awakening. And then the outrage and stuff, the emotional charge that goes out, that energetic pulse that people send out. Then it goes and it's going to reverberate back on us and it's going to create the change. And it's the solar event kind of situation, whatever it is. It's energetic. It's plasma. It's not <clears throat> like a fireball is going to shoot fire at us. It's an energy. Like all these times when the Schumann residence is showing this high energy spikes, you don't see anything. I mean, you can feel things. You can feel like intense emotions. You can have stuff be brought up. You can, um, you know, be fighting with people. You can be tired, like all different things. And right now we're so under attack with the weapons, the chemicals and all of this stuff. It's hard to differentiate between all of the different things going on. So anyways, when that uh, happens, this energetic surge happens and, um, and then... So we send it out to the sun. The sun sends it back to us. And that is when I have heard that ships and stuff will come and take people who their vibration is too low. They'll take them somewhere else. And the people who are high vibration will just ride it out. So see, that's where I think if you know your own power, your own abilities as a soul, you understand like nothing can hurt you, that you're eternal then I think you can ride out the energy however it's going to go. I don't, I don't really know. It's some sort of expansion. And so I don't know. I, to me, I feel like it's some sort of energetic expansion is going to do something to the ferment. I think the, that's, the, that's the cataclysm. I think the energy is going to do something to the ferment and that's going to release us from this controlled environment that we've been experiencing. That's the ascension. That's the graduation. That's the exploration. That's the the big change, I think. And I think it could be why the water raises. But I've seen more of these maps still. I saw a really cool one someone shared. And it was uh, ley lines on the globe. And then they did ley lines on the flat earth. And when they did the flat earth, it was like a giant um, mandala over the earth. And so if you think of that giant mandala, because this is an amphitheater. This is a place where we're projected into. So it is a stage. And I think that is why there is so much um, messing up right now where we're all seeing all these different things is because like that lady said in Allison's thing, is the structure of the illusion of the hologram is falling apart because we're not all seeing the same thing. We're not all directing, like we don't all believe anymore that the sky is blue, that the sun is orange, and that we are in a, uh, spinning around on a globe out in space. And 
you know, we have to try, try and travel hundreds of millions of light years to get anywhere and all this bullshit. So, you know, as we all awaken into different parts of that, that is why I think everything is starting to not look right or not look real because we're just seeing through the illusion and it's breaking the illusion down. And I thought it was just so interesting how that woman said, if it really went off right now, we would see it. We're just in empty space. And that's what I keep saying, like when my eyes do this weird stuff and it's like I don't see the the picture around me of the the environment that I'm in. Instead, I see the darkness, the black, this hologram, I mean the honeycomb kind of thing. And all of these little um, tiny little boxes that create color. Like how we're projected into it to create all of this. Like stuff that is so far advanced from what people have any idea about. And they're constantly trying to stay in this like caveman kind of existence. And everything has to make sense in three dimensional. But it's not going to make sense in three dimensional. Because three dimensional doesn't even really exist. Three dimensional is like, you know, like a, a printer compared to a 3D printer. Like it can print out the thing so you can pick it up and look at it and see it. That is like what we are when we are projected in. We're just projected into something so we can see it. So we can see it in the three-dimensional, like, um, you know, like having paper dolls, not even paper dolls because they're flat, like having Barbies in a dollhouse. That is what our three-dimensional projection is all about it's just like toys to play to experience to watch yourself in a movie and to see like what do I what am I like to watch what do I do who am I how do I affect people it's all about that for self to understand self by projecting into these experiences to um to evolve and so you know, I, I don't know. I, I think that, the, I don't know. I just hear so many people trying to make sense of stuff by using the three-dimensional template to make sense. Just like there's so many people still are, I mean, there's a lot of arguing about Christian God uh, reality stuff with people. And, um, you know, there's people who literally believe there is somebody in the sky and they are going to come down and save them. Like they really believe that and they feel sorry for those of us who don't. And as far as I'm concerned, Jesus told you how to save yourself. Why are you dependent on him? I have seen people so angry about um, the Trumpster sitting there telling him to get these. And now they're like, see, he was out to kill us too. And I've said like, I think... It is all about stop following. Do not follow. Just because somebody says something, that doesn't mean it's what you have to do. You have to have this sovereignty spirit to make your own decisions for yourself. And then take responsibility for your decisions. However it goes. And that's what a lot of people are going to have some hard lessons for in this time period. Because when people have made some decisions that they didn't know how serious it was going to impact their lives so they're going to have to really go in and really understand themselves and why they make the decisions they do who do they follow why do they follow them why didn't they have their own instincts you know and they're going to be very hurt that some people had instincts and, and you know when you feel like all these other people knew and I didn't know how do you think those people are going to feel they're working on ego I mean, this is all ego stuff. So when they understand like, oh, you understood, you you under, you under had instincts, you could see it, and I couldn't see it, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? That seems to be such a huge human uh, characteristic. What's wrong with me? Everybody thinks something's wrong with them. Nobody can accept themselves and just be free to be, be free to be you and just allow yourself to be you and then you know, go with the flow and don't be thinking like you have to be perfect. Like, you know, you don't have to be anything other than what you are right here, right now. That's all you have to be. 
And there's so much pressure on people. You got to be better. You got to be better than you are and stuff like that. No, you don't. You don't have to be better than anybody. You don't have to be better than you. You just have to be. You have to be and you have to take responsibility for yourself. And that is how really change occurs. These people who are waiting on someone to, to save them, is he supposed to take responsibility for all of the pain and hardship and problems you've caused in other people's lives? Because that's what you got to face. You got to face that part of yourself. And then you can save yourself. It's, it's, it's a simple process that seems to be very hard for people to understand. And it seems to be a lot easier for people to, to get this idea that someone's going to fly from the sky and come out and save them. I, I just don't see it that way. There's a lot of things I hear about people saying, I just don't see it that way at all. You know, the, there seems to be a lot of the, the, you know, the same thing with the spiritual crowd. You know, you have people who are really spiritual, who are really trying to talk about like, this is a real relationship with your Lord and Savior. You know, that is you, yourself. This is a true relationship with self and your connection to all things there's some weird message it just came i keep getting weird messages where people like i don't know try and play a game and then they just pick random numbers and then just to try and watch people get irritated it's like reminds me of the ring the doorbell that game we used to play when we were little you go ring somebody's doorbell and then you run and hide in their bushes and they come and we just think it was so funny. I'm like, oh my God, can you believe they answered the door? We weren't there. Oh, so funny. Like, oh my God. No, <laughs> ridiculous. We thought that was fun. Um, but anyways, um, I think, you know, you get what I'm saying is I, I think it is everything is about us changing how we look at things. It's how we look at ourselves. It's how we look at the world. It's how we look at life. It's how we look at our savior. <clears throat> Every single thing that's going on is about us challenging our own self, challenging our own perspective, challenging our own perceptions, and to look in a broader perspective. And, you know, just like those freaking uh, spiritual people that are just not healed. Like I literally know ones that are not healed at all. And still, you know, it, it is so far beyond goddamn taking walks in nature and, you know, carrying your crystals and meditating. It's so far beyond that what your what the relationship is in spirituality i saw another person who well, i've had this one person there start telling me about the, jesus christ and all this stuff and uh, you know the bad thing about the new age people and i was just like i'm new age <laughs> and they're like yeah i know it's like okay dude <laughs> nice talking to you um but people get this idea because if you're new age and you don't worship Jesus, then you don't worship God. But I feel like if you are truly spiritual, you are closer to God than some people who are sitting in church pews for hours, you know, because they're sitting there looking at their fingernails, checking their phone. What song do I sing? You know, they're not really connecting to self, to, uh, you know, your creator. So, and most people don't even, like, they think they need to connect to Jesus and Mary and stuff and not to their higher self. So, I don't know. They think that us New Agers are wacky. And um, I, I think that that is the true relationship in spirituality is like the more new age way of looking at things. And I think it's not by an accident that it was called new age when I started becoming it 40 fucking years ago. It was called new age and you were made fun of all the time. Ah, oh, you new age, ah, oh, you new age. And they did it in movies and stuff. They made like the new age people a bunch of wacky people and they'd wear 
crystals and talk and be nice to people. And they always were like some sort of weirdos. And uh, because when you really are connected to self, you can't go around hurting people because you feel the pain that you put out. So, I don't know. I think there's there's just so much confusion. There's so much confusion with people. And people just want to... I, I, I swear to God. <laughs> I feel like right now it is... It is like the general populace is like a giant anthill. And somebody just went and poured gasoline in it. And all the answers scurrying around trying to figure out what's happening. Because... You know, there's just all these different ideas and thoughts. And, you know, like everyone else, I think mine are right. I think I, I think I see it uh, more clearly or something. I don't know. But nobody should just follow me and do what I say. Go out and find what makes sense to you. Because, I mean, to those other people, it makes sense that we're about to, you know, the planet's about to spin and the sun's heating up and and I don't know but anyways I'm gonna I will um bring my stuff and I'll probably record I'll put this one out it's kind of ranty I've really been in a ranty mood for the past few days uh, maybe it's the towers it really is loud I mean it is so loud in my ear it is um horrible and I know it fucks with your sleep Fucks with fucking hair falling out. But I do have um, new hairs growing in right here. Where I was noticing my hair was going up. But this side, there's still something weird with this side. I haven't found any big, like, holes. But it seems like, like, this whole side is growing slower. And it seems like it's more, um, like, the texture is different. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just, um just really sick of the oh another thing too i'll stand with this one is i saw there's this funny guy and if you've seen him before he's got like curly long red hair and he's got this mustache he has a distinct voice and he's always doing these little skits these little plays to um show you something without just saying it and this one was um he plays both parts but it's two guys discussing um, you know, weapon control. And so he, um, he starts the one guy who is for it starts talking about all of these different countries, a whole bunch of different countries that did this. And then shortly after they took everything from the people, then they went in and exterminated huge numbers, huge numbers, like Oh my, I didn't even know all this stuff, what he was talking about. And it was, um, some of it was during the time when I was alive. Like, I think it was like Cambodia, maybe. It was like from 1971, they took them. And then I think from 75 to 79, they killed like 300,000 uh, 300, people. There was some that they killed million. There was some that, all different numbers. But every time that they have done this, it's been a huge... Um, huge shakedown on the reduction of population so you know but it's part of what they do it's part of their plan and every soul is here to go through whatever they are choosing to go through in this experience and you know i don't know I, even when you see people waking up they're just they're not seeing everything they're not waking up to everything they're not seeing it all and seeing the truth and like, I think it's important to realize that you are in a place where you are a lab rat and they are purposely trying to exterminate a huge amount of people right now. Like, I think that everyone should have that awareness and have the ability to take matters in their own hands of their own health and do what they can to take care of themselves, you know? And, um, and I do think it is important to work on your spiritual connection you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. I've just always been one of those people who, you know, I needed to be connected to my maker or whatever. I, I just have always been a spiritual person. So, 
I don't know. But to me, a lot of these people who are going around being like, oh, I'm so spiritual. It's, it's just that same hierarchy. Like, I'm better than you. I'm more spiritual than you. Oh, you need to be vegan. And you need to buy more crystals. And, you know, all of this stuff. It's just more of this hierarchy competition. I'm better than you. It's all stuff that we have to let go of. And... You know, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe we are on a ball spinning out in space and maybe we are going to have a pole shift. I don't know what it will mean, you know, changing it. I used to think that, I mean, I used to believe that we were a ball spinning out in space and that the pole was shifting. I just, I don't look at it like that anymore. Now, I definitely look at it as there's a firmament and that we are stationary. And it's all just like a giant honeycomb of different land masses, different re, um, realities. Even in a reality where we are, there's layers of realities because there's realities in the ocean where there's beings living their experiences. There's all sorts of inner earth people. There's all sorts of experiences going on all around us. There's people in the goddamn forest that you just can't see. But they're still there. There's fucking giants. There's everything. There's realities all over the place here. So, um, anyways, I'll stop ranting. <laughs> I'll start getting my stuff together to go. So today will be my long drive day. I'm just going to relax and enjoy it. And um, just put on some music. I don't know. I hope that the weather is pretty good. So anyways, I'll talk to you later. Just, um, you know, whatever you believe, don't let other people put you off. What feels right to you, know your truth is your truth. You don't have to align with somebody else's truth. You don't have to buy into what other people believe. You know, you, your soul will tell you what your soul wants you to know. And your soul will lead you in the direction that you want to go. And, you know, just don't, don't let people put you off of what you believe. But always be open-minded to expand your thinking. Don't be like some of these people who are just super, super stuck. And, you know, not expanding anything. Nope, it's just this. This is all it is. This is it, you know. But, you know, when the truth is revealed, you know, that's where people are going to be humbled. Their ego is so inflated because, you know, nobody has all the answers. Everybody has to come together. That's how we create the answers. Everybody has to come together. And I see people all the time saying such great stuff, like really, really good stuff. I saw a girl today um, talking about um, your subconscious and your conscious and how you create your reality by putting the messages in there and talking down to yourself how significant it is and stuff like she did, did a great uh represent a great um whatever it is presented a great um information i don't know I'm out of it but you know there is so many people who are giving so much helpful information i think but you know then there's other people who just I don't know, want us all to believe what they believe. It's like, I don't, I don't care. Believe what you want to believe. You know, if you want to believe that someone's coming up in the sky to save you, then that's what you're here to learn about. If you want to believe that the sun is just heating up and, you know, the earth is going to spin out, I, you know, that's, that's each person's own individual stuff that they get to believe. You know, I, I don't, I don't care. You know, whatever anybody wants to believe, then they can believe it. But I just see things different. I don't see things the way they see things. So I'm going to put out what I see because I think that we need to have a lot of different information. We need to have a lot of different people's perspective, not just, you know, <clears throat> not just a few people's. So anyways, I'll talk to you later. Bye.